It's that time again. It's time for an art book update. I have not done one in, like, ever, if at all. So, I think it's time to go back. I'm going to show you some art books I got, etc. Now, I think I've shown you some of these. I know I showed a lot of them on stream before, so that's fine. But this is just a recorded video just to go through some of the books. So, let's start with the most recent one, which is this one. Groundworks of Ava 3.0, you cannot redo Volume 1. Uh, this this one is actually really good. I, I'm, I'm really surprised how detailed this one is. So, like, it starts off with there's some, some artwork, which is pretty, pretty cool. I do like that this one has at least some art, but mostly it is all, all, like, it, like, uh, frame, frames of animation. So you see Legasca, like, piloting her Ava, all that kind of stuff. But, guys, so every time I watch Unit, uh, Unit 3, whoops, Ava, uh, Ava 3, 3.0, I always, always get intrigued by this one frame. And I, I don't understand what's going on in it. It's like, ah, oh, man, I don't know. It's, it's the part where... Like, Unit 1 does does shit. Like, it does something. Uh, and I don't know what I'm looking at every time I see it. It's this little frame here. You see that? And I'm like, what is this thing? And I think what it is, is it's Unit 1's, like, eye. I think that's its eye right there. Because it awakened in in Ava 2. So I think that's like its awakened form, kind of. Uh, even though, like, it, it kind of became a normal Unit 1 in the new movie. But that that's another deal. But you might be asking, Theo, why did he get Volume 1 not Volume 2? I did, by the way, by the way, I did cave and get uh, Volume 2. So that's coming. That's coming. Uh, but you also might be asking, why didn't I get... Uh, the groundwork book for Ava 2.0 or 1.0. Well, it's very easy. Very easy explanation. I love this movie a lot. This is my favorite movie. A lot of people don't like you, uh, Ava 3.0. You know, a lot of people criticize it, all this stuff. I personally love it because it is... It, it, it goes so off the rails. It just drops you in into, like, what the fuck's going on. I just, I just love it about that movie. Like, everyone is like, well, there's all these questions it doesn't really answer, and it just generates all this stuff. But that is what's fun about it. I like the mystery of, like, holy shit, what's going on? And I do like that, that Anno stuck to his guns pretty much by the last movie and didn't really explain everything, you know? Like, it was like, okay, we're gonna make a movie, and we're gonna, like, explain everything, like, MGS4 style. It's like, no, nope. This is, a lot of people want, like, there to be a, a spin-off series of the stuff that's in between Eva 2, 2.0, and 3.0. I'm, I'm against that, personally. I, I like the mystery. I, I, I think if you do a show that's in between that, it just removes that part of 3 that, because a lot of people just don't like it because it has all these questions, but I think that's, like, it gets you invested in the universe. The fact that you're thinking about what's going on, like what happened, you know, and it it adds a layer of of of, of like, hey, just keep rewatching Ava, and then you'll like get something that's either intended or not. You know, I I that's that's what I that's what I love about it. But the other main reason I got this, another main reason, guys. The beginning of the movie has a lot of good frames of all my favorite characters. So this has this has Gendo Ikari, you know my favorite character. He's 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 here, uh, but it has it has a lot of Masato. Three point oh Masato, which I, I I like a lot. Three point oh Masato is the best Masato, because that one is kind of like her transition to becoming like her own version of of Gendo, pretty much. Like I'll show you a frame. Oh wait wait, almost passed. Pass by it. See, you have this. It is pretty rad. But my favorite one, hands down, is this one. 
Maybe it's multiple frames. Like, this one's pretty cool. Like, the sad eye kind of thing. Like, that one's pretty cool. What's interesting, what, what's really interesting, I want to look at this. In the in the movie, you don't see the eye. Like, it, because she's wearing sunglasses. So, okay, but in the frame, it, it really showed where she was looking, which is interesting. Like, it's kind of, it's kind of cool. But, yeah, so that's that's the groundworks for Ava 3.0. I, I love this. I love this book. Oh, uh, what kind of turned me on to, to this kind of stuff, to be honest, was Kill Out Kill. Kill. I had this one frame it, frame book for Kill Out Kill that I really liked, and this one just is perfect. The thing that's crazy about this is that the art for for this for these movies are incredible. Like the animation is just fantastic. So, all right, that's that's this. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna like just. Skip by these because I've shown I've shown this one off before. Castlevania, Lord, oh not Lord of the Shadow, whoops. Castlevania, uh, art of the animation. Now, of course, there's all this kind of there is a semi drama with with this animation studio in the past. I've been hearing, but that's that's not what we're here to talk about. This is a decent book. I would compare this book honestly to the Korra art books. The Korra art books I like; those are my favorite ones. I think I like those a little bit more than this. Because the core art books, at least, like, they show concept art and background art, but it also showed uh, storyboard anime, like, the frame data of of a lot of their fight scenes and all this kind of stuff, which I liked. And this doesn't have that. It's just the art, which is good, but it's just, I would have liked to see some, some like, storyboard kind of stuff in, in here. But other than that, it's still pretty good. It has... It has commentary from the from the staff in this book, so that's that. It be it could be a good read, but yeah, it, it's just like the core art books. But I would argue the core art books are are way better. All right, this one I think I've shown before in an art book update, but here's this one. I don't remember the name of this one because it's all in Japanese, obviously. Uh but it has all this like production art. Of like all of their work. Now this one, oh, there's there's like a few books here that we're gonna that it's gonna have a common theme. What I like about these books is that it can it has stuff even before they were studio triggers. So they had stuff from Gynax, like Gurren Lagann, uh, Panty and Stocking. Like these two were, were Gynax shows. Then these are like trigger trigger stuff. So I do like that this has everything. It's not like oh. Since we're Studio Trigger, we can't we can't have uh Gynax stuff in here, you know, for licensing purposes or whatever. But I do like that it has all that kind of stuff in this. All right. Then we got Sushio, the Idol. This this book I had very low expectations for. I thought I was gonna hate this book. I actually like this book. This book is really rad. Uh, Sushio is a, another artist that works in Studio Trigger, of course. I mean, you can you can only tell like, that this dude works in Studio Trigger just by looking at the uh, cover. I mean, I, I just noticed he's wearing a hoodie that says Trigger on it. Okay, guys, I know. <laughs> don't con don't. I know I'm gonna see a thousand comments. Theo, it says Trigger on his hoodie. I know. I saw it. But. You have all this, like, stuff. So, this shows all the work he did on other projects. Like, it has, like, Ava art, Kill a Kill art, all this stuff, like, that he worked on in the past. I like... Okay. I'm going to show you what I like. I like, I like this. These, this is my favorite kind of art right here. I like how cool this looks. It's, like, really rad. Uh, so, it has, like, all that kind of stuff and original works as well. I think he's opening his own merch store at some point which i'm excited for because i think i i think he might be selling a certain jacket that looks really cool and i really really fucking want it but uh that's sushio the idol this is a good art book if you want something that's like more like has it has a lot of color it's a lot of like uh big illustrations so i i i would recommend this too uh i might have shown this in another video but for good measure, the Persona 5 Royal Art Book. I really, really wish Atlas just made an official art book for this. Because this does not have any of the stuff that's in the game. 
I mean, it has like Maruki, Kasumi, uh, and all that, but it doesn't have like half the stuff that that is in the game. Like, it doesn't have uh, Maruki's persona, for example. Like the the thing that I, I might have complained about this on Twitter, but it says like on one of these pages, this book includes spoilers from the game. It doesn't. That's that's not correct because I went through all of this and it's just literally stuff that you could just get from a trailer. Like it it just shows Maruki and Kasumi. That alone is not a fucking spoiler. Like it doesn't show like like what where is the spoilers in this? Like I really don't see it because it's not like they ever show the final boss of royal they don't show like sumere or anything so uh this claiming that this has spoilers is factually incorrect which is why i want them to release a full book like release the shit release that shit because the thing is it's like the same deal with the soundtrack they give you like a 10 soundtrack thing with the collections edition and then like oh that's not all the songs i want all the songs but whatever okay and then we got this one look at this another studio trigger book it's the art of yo yoshinari uh yo yoshinari is honestly one of my favorite artists uh he did he did uh brand new animal i think that was his I don't know if he directed any other anime, but I think that was one of his animes he directed. Uh, a lot of the animation in that show really co looks like his kind of style, so that it were, it checks out. Uh, Yo Yushinari also did Girl in the Gun. He did A Little Academia, etc., etc. Uh, I do like the cover. It has like an adult version of Akko, like a more successful version of her. <laughs> so I do like that. It's, it's an interesting uh, concept right here it's it's kind of cool but this book I, a lot of the reviews were saying like oh this book is not that good oh there's some pixelation on the edge you won't notice it and all this stuff but i think this is pretty rad i mean there's some stuff here that's like kind of kind of cool but i will say uh i was kind of so i mostly bought this because i was kind of in a uh a mode where I just wanted more books that had low tech academia artwork in it. And this doesn't have a lot of it. This has like a lot of like Girl in the Gun, Kill a Kill. Like it's more varied in that kind of sense. Oh, look at that. That's pretty cool. See, this pages like this I like, but I just don't like that's on a centerfold. Like the, the cruise just kind of ruins it, kind of. All right, so this is a good book. Uh, this has been going on and off on Amazon, by the way. So, you know, if, you, if you're interested in this book, you, you should act sooner rather than later. Because uh, I was going to try to get this on Amazon. I go to Amazon, and then I couldn't find this book at all anymore. And then I had to go to eBay for this book. Bought it there, and then when I bought it on eBay, then I saw it on Amazon. I was like, oh, of course. So, it goes up, uh, on and off. Another book I showed before, Venture Brothers. Uh, this is a very thick book uh, because honestly, this is more like a behind the scenes um, book than just an art book. I mean, it's an art book, but it's also just them going over how they made this book, made the show. So uh, I'll have to read this at some point. The Guild of Calamid Calamitous. Oh my god, this is Chinese text. Calamitous Intent. Explicit level 8 evil content, guys. I. I made it to level 8. <laughs> kind of a big deal in, in the guild. Uh, then I got this this little thing. I got another one over there, which I'll show late, pretty soon. But this is just a little, little frame, frame animation. Uh, I will say I, I don't hate this, these books. But I don't know what I was expecting with these. <laughs> To be completely honest, but these aren't bad. I I think these are like fun little collectors things that for me. Like it's like oh okay, like I do like that it shows a lot of the like this kind of shows more detail into like the in between frames and like frame data like that kind of stuff. So this this shows a little bit more detail than uh the big collection book I have. But I would if you were to ask me which should you get these or 
the big collection book. I think think the one I have is like volume three. I'll get the volume three because that has better presentation, bigger, bigger frames, all this stuff. This is just good if you just like want it as supplemental, but I would not recommend this if you just want a big collection of frames. So this is good, but I would I would I, I would recommend the other the other book more. Uh th then we got this one. Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse, guys, uh, Marvel time, baby. Uh, I, this is the only Marvel property I li like. This is the only Marvel movie I genuinely liked a lot. Uh, every other Marvel movie is like, whatever, but th this was actually decently good. So, I, I do like this book. Uh, it also explains into the making of the movie, but the art is just really gorgeous. Like, look at this. Look at this. It's gorgeous art. I think, I think, like... I've said this before about about this movie and about this art style is that I would love this movie like this style to be used in more mature uh independent movies like not properties not comic books just do a, a standalone movie with it with this style damn it enough of this like oh we gotta make it like we gotta do with Spider-Man like no, nothing else and then there's, like, Mitchells versus the Machines, but that's, like, a family movie. I want, like, an adult movie with this, like, blood coming out and, like, you know, crazy shit. All right. Let's move on. Let's move on, guys. Udon's Art of Capcom 3. I know there's other, there's other two volumes, but I picked this one. Because it had, I don't know, I don't remember why I bought this. Oh, it was on sale, that's why, now I remember. Uh, this is kind of a cool book. I like, Udon does, does, Udon is pretty good for Capcom stuff, I've noticed. Uh, Udon's been there for like, I, I think they did the Darkstalker, was it? yeah, Darkstalkers. They did the Darkstalkers art book. Uh, they've done a lot of stuff for Capcom. So this is, this is pretty rad. Mostly gotta be the Tom Morgan right there. She, she's like my favorite Darkstalkers character. So, this is a lot of, like, independent artists and all this stuff. Like, these kind of books, I will say I love these books because these, these come off as a celebration of, of artists. Like, oh, you did all this art for Capcom? Well, let's put it all in a book and celebrate it. I mean, sure, you you have to buy it, but, you know, it's it's rad. I do like these books. These are like my, one of my favorite books. Uh, it kind of it kind of makes it uh, feel wholesome a little bit. I know that sounds very silly, but uh, I they did one for uh, for Darkstalkers as well, where it's just a big collection of like fan art for for Darkstalkers, which is pretty nice. Uh, all right. Guys, this is this one might be a very quick one to show because it's nothing new, nothing nothing impressive. But the second version of of the Legend of Korra art book for volume for book one, uh, I I like this cover. All, this is a better cover than what they had for the first press. The first press had this weird version of Korra. She looked like an alien. And I hated it, so I'm very happy that that uh that that they that this is the cover for the second pressing. I kind of got it for that reason, uh. But I think I was under the the impression that there would be some new art, and I don't know if there is. I kind of would have to uh, compare this to the other one. I think that you know what? I think there is new art. I think this is the new, this is one of them. I don't think this was in the old one in the first pre the first version. So there we go. That was art from uh, Brian Konietzko. Uh, but yeah, I like these art books. Uh, again, as I said with, about the Castlevania one, these I think are a little more uh, interesting. I will say, like, uh, I would argue, book two is not a good season of the show. It's not, you know, it's my least favorite one. But, but, the art book for book two is really good. I do like the art book for book two. Book three had a good art book, so did book four. Like, the art books are all great, so you can't go wrong with either of them. So, Legend of Korra, and, you know, great show. I like the show. Everyone everyone dunks on it, but, you know what, I'm 
I'm going to sing the praise of that show. It's a great show. Great show. Great stuff. But it is what it is. I, I ain't going to, like, fault people for not liking it. I get it. But I like the show. It's it's great. All right. All right, guys. So... Earlier, I showed you that Yo Yoshinari book, right? You guys remember that book. I don't have to bring that out, out again. And same with the Asushio, the Idol book. Th these two books, I would compare to those. Mostly to, the, to uh, the Idol, pretty much. Because this has no concept art at all, but this has a lot of like promotional art from Catherine all the way to Persona 5. And original art as well. I like these books a lot. I do not like this cover, by the way. This is my least favorite cover. Do not like it. It's it's just bad. Uh, this was done by Udon, which is very... It's weird. I don't think Persona has a very consistent publisher for these art books because they did uh, Prima for Persona 5, and then this is Udon, so... I don't know the deal with that. But what's funny about this book is... About these, these books I'm going to show you... I bought I bought the Japanese versions initially because these were not in print for a long time. Like no one was printing these anymore. Uh, so I got the Japanese versions, and the Japanese versions have a different presentation entirely. Like they have like a glossy plastic sleeve or whatever, and all this kind of stuff. And then here it's like a normal book. So I I do prefer this a little bit more than the Japanese ones. I don't know what why why it's like. And I get to read the uh, the uh, interview with um, Sh Shigenori Sojima, so that's that's cool. But I like this one a little bit more. I'm I'm very I was very surprised. There was some artwork for Persona Five that's not in the Persona Five art book, which which was like, why why isn't why didn't this get in? But it's here. Uh, so I really like it. This has a lot of cool art, which I really like, and has a lot of crossover art as well. So. I would recommend this one as well. I think it's it might still be on sale, so there's that. This one's pretty rad. Now we get to this one. I guess this is the first one I got. Because it's the best one, to be compl to be honest. Because it has a lot of Persona 3 in it. The best Persona game. It has artwork of Metis. I just want to show this artwork of Metis. It, it, it is my favorite, favorite drawing of it of of Metis and Igus. It it is it is my favorite in this entire book. No other book has uh convinced me otherwise. I just have to find it, guys. Hold on. I think I'm getting close because I think it's. The way it's organized is pretty, pretty good because it's like, okay, here's Persona 3. Oh, right now FPS. And then Portable. I haven't played Portable yet. Here it is. This is my favorite illustration of Metis and Igus. I Like, it is, it is, especially like, once he beat Persona 3 The Answer, this is, this is pretty cool because you realize... The answer kind of kind of lies to you and says, "Oh, Metis is is Igus' sister," but in reality, uh, Metis is pretty much Igus's shadow. You know, like in Persona Four, like they show this a lot in Persona Four, mostly, uh, where you see the shadow version of the of a, of your party members, so the shadow Kaj, Kaji and all this bullshit, right? That's what Metis is, pretty much. It was just. I guess a shadow because you had all these all this self doubt whatever. So I really like that that illustration is very it's a very powerful illustration. So I really like it. it I I love it. And the cover is great too. That covers Persona three all the way to I don't know if the cover is golden. I don't think it does. Uh, hold on, we can we can we can double check this. If I see Marie, I know for. For sure, it's golden. But I don't think it has golden. No. It's just vanilla Persona 4. So. There's that. 
Oh, uh, let's see. I there there's there there's a few more guys. You know, you guys love love art books, right? This is for art book lovers. So I've shown Cora. You guys seen seen the Cora art book. I think it's time. I don't know what that was doing there. The original, the OG. This is this is the shit everyone loves. Avatar: The Last Airbender. This is the second edition of 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 this book. So it's like, duh, and like it's the endings, like, duh, 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 like all this stuff where Aang is like doing fun, like all this like crazy shit, right? I did not finish reading this book. I, I, I kind of got it. And I was like, oh, I'm just going to go through this. So I'm going to, I'm going to uh, go through this at some point. But what's kind of a bummer about uh, the uh, last Airbender books was that it really does come off as... Oh, since we're doing the core art books, we have to do one for Avatar, obviously. We have to do one. And instead of just doing each book individually, uh, they just combined all of them in one book, which I don't think does anything any justice. Unless they didn't have a lot of material to, to share, which I guess is the case. Like, maybe they just didn't have enough material. But uh, it's just a bummer that it's like, oh, just cram it all in one book. Because, like, look how thin it is. I was kind of disappointed because I was like, this has three seasons of a show, and this is how thick the book is. Like, I mean, you look at, uh, I mean, this is the same thickness almost as book one. Book one is a, for Korra's thinner, but you know, it's almost the same. Though I do like the cover. The cover is pretty pretty baller. I'm glad I. So I saw the first edition. I'm glad I didn't buy it because that cover is was a basic bitch fucking cover. It was just Aang just chilling on, on a hill. Wow. Well, this, it's like, badass. It's like, oh, Aang's gonna fuck you up. Like, it's pretty cool. I really like this cover. It's a really good cover. So I'm glad I, I held off from buying it and got the second edition instead of buying the first edition. Alright, so there's that. I think I've shown you the Horizon Zero Dawn book, so we're not, not gonna show that. These I'll show. These are long books. I do. I don't like long books to be honest. I I like tall ones, but you know you can't choose the book you get, right? The rough. The rough, This is called the art of Yo Yo Shinori rough sketches. I've talked about this on a lot of art streams in the past, and I'll keep saying it again. This is the best book. If you're an artist, if you're an aspiring artist, this is fantastic. Because there's all these poses and all these drawings and rough sketches of all these like iterations of stuff that this guy drew. Like I really liked I really liked a lot of this stuff. Like a lot of this stuff like fuels me. I just want to find one where it's just literally there's a page where it is just arms. And I want to find it. I want to find this. Well, maybe when I could get lucky. I don't think I'm going to get lucky. But it's it's rad. It covers a lot of Gainax stuff though. So like if you're expecting trigger stuff in this, you're not you're not getting it. But you get you get Lord Genome. A lot of cool artwork of him, too, by the way. Like, Origin was the guy with the beard. Origin was one of my favorite characters of Girl in the Gun, to be honest. Like, I thought he was rad. Uh, he he was just this, like, beat up guy. He's just like, he wanted everyone to stay underground so the anti spirals wouldn't kill them or whatever. Like, he was, he was a rad villain. So. Again, this book is great if you're an aspiring artist. There's a lot of sketches that this guy was just doing anatomy stuff pretty much. Like, you could definitely tell that a lot of the stuff in this book is stuff that he was probably doing as a warm-up before he got to work. Uh, now, let's move on to Kill a Kill. 
Volume 2, The Art of Kill a Kill. Now, there's Volume 1. Didn't get it. I'm gonna pass on it. I don't know. I don't know if I should get it. No one really convinced me otherwise. But, I got this, and I'm glad I got it, because this has a lot of stuff that I like. It has... Because the thing is that, like, they, they had stuff from, like, the first two episodes. So, part of me is like, what does Volume 1 really have? You know what I mean? But, I do like this all the same. Like, it has, like, Satsuki. It has all these, like, rough sketches as well. And stuff that was, like, not in the show. So, I do like it. I do like this book. It's a nice, nice little book. Uh, it's just... It is... The one thing about this book that's that's just wild to me is that a lot of these sketches are fucking rough to the point where they don't some of them don't look that that pleasing to look at like there's some that's just like okay this is cool like oh weapon uh, I'm just thinking of weapons here but there's just stuff here that just it just looks rough in some cases like this is the cleanest art in the entire book and it's fucking newy I hate Nui. Why does she get this treatment? Like, you guys know me. You know me. I'm a huge nut for Ragio. Ragio Kiryuin is so rad, and this is what they do for her. This is this is her panel. Her, they give her two pages, which is cool. But why doesn't she get clean art like Nui? Why is Nui? Why does Nui get it and not Ragio, the main fucking villain? I mean, come on. But what's funny about these two books is that there's two concept like this has Ragyo in volume two and the volume three is more concept art for Ragyo Kiryuin, which is like insane to me. It's like why is there two volumes of the same character? Whatever. So then we got volume three, as I said already. I alluded to this. I like so I love I love that that the covers of these books kind of tell a story. Uh, I think the uh, first one is. I would like to say it's just a picture of Ryuko, but I'm not sure. But I like that here it's like, they're pissed. They're mad. Fuck you. Fuck you, energy. We're friends. <laughs> like, I I love that even the covers tell a story. Because by the end of the show, like, they, you know, you, you realize, they're, they're, you know, who they are. Okay, this is going to be a little side tangent. I, I just want to bring this up. There, there's a Twitter account I follow that does good art. I like the art, but, but, I don't, I don't retweet this guy because it's so fu- I, I, it feels kind of disturbing a little bit because he draws these two as if they're a couple, but, but if you've watched the show, I mean, this is spoilers, by the way, so, you know, if you haven't watched Kill la Kill and you care about that, plug your ears, they're sisters. So, this dude, drawing this, like, lewd shit for them, it's like, I, I, I like the art, but I'm not retweeting this. This is way too disturbing, and I, and I don't, I don't like it. Uh, you know, if you haven't seen, if you haven't finished watching this show, like, like, look, if you, if you watch, like, two episodes, let's say, and you're like, oh, well, you know, they're, they're like a couple. It's like, I can let that slide, because it's like, hey, you haven't seen the whole show yet. But if you watch the show all the way through and the takeaway is, wow, they, they, they're a cute couple. It's like, go, don't, don't talk to me <laughs> pretty much because, uh, yeah, they're, they're, they're sisters. So wh why the fuck? Why? Why? So this dude on Twitter who's, who's making this art, I, I don't know why. I, I don't, I don't know if this guy ever explained it. I don't know if there was ever drama with it, but I don't feel comfortable ever retweeting it, so you'll never see me retweet this guy's art. It's it's so fucking weird. Uh, the thing is that I got bamboozled because I first saw this person's art. I was like, oh, this guy looks looks cool, cool art, whatever. And then I started scrolling through all his work. I was like, oh, no, no. Like, I guess I guess you could argue that maybe it's like a headcanon, like, oh, you know, I know they're sisters, but like, whatever. But I, it's just it, it's. It's too weird. It's too weird. Okay, look. They're sisters. Don't don't want don't want any anything like that. You know what I mean? So this art is pretty cool too. So okay, so now it gets even even cooler, guys. It gets even cooler. We're 
Oh, man, you know what? I think... Yeah, okay. <laughs> this is gonna laugh. Kill story. You wanna know why? You wanna know why this looks like a Toy Story character? That you might be wondering. Oh, did someone on the team... Like, was it, were they a fan of Pixar and they just drew this? No. An artist who works at Pixar, who did Toy Story, is a fan of, of Kill la Kill and drew this. <laughs> so, I, I, I love that there's this, like, every, everyone, everyone, like, dunks on this. This is a little pet peeve of mine, and this might, this could be a standalone video almost, but there's this huge comparison and verses I've seen on Twitter where it's like, Eastern stuff versus West. And it's like, you know, in the field of animation and art and all this stuff, like, it's it's more of this, this sense of unity where everyone's just excited to see what other people do, etc. Like, there's this, like, you know, everyone, like, likes to compare these two, like, schools of animation and, like, always prefer one over the other, whatever. But at the end of the day, all like, every, like, you work at Pixar, DreamWorks, uh, Trigger, Gynax, whatever... Uh, they all have a mutual respect for each other. Like they all, all in the same boat. Uh, I'm sure you you say, but yeah, there's there's a guy on Twitter who works in this in the industry, and they say this about that. Fuck that. We're not talking about that. We're talking about that wholesome shit. Okay. Damn it. So I do like that they have like they 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 showcase this guy's art. Like even they, they he drew this. This is fan art <laughs> from the guy who is drawing drawing kill a kill. And I'll be honest, some of it doesn't look that great. I'm not too crazy about it, but it's stylized, so it's it, it gets away with it. I do like this drawing of Yuka, though. This is a good one. Uh, I do like, but the thing is that I love how it goes all over the place with this art. Like it 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 goes like here, which is like standard fan art you'd expect. Then it shows this. This I don't think anyone would be drawing fan art of. Uh, Monster Yuko. But I so so that's there's that um. I, I, oh my god, I, I, I gotta bring this up again. The Kill Story one, I love this one. The more I look at it, the, I laugh, I, I love it more and more. It has, I think it's supposed to be, um, Jessie. And she just says, you've got a friend in me. Buzz Lightyear with a broken heart in his, in his mind. Like, it's, it's just such a great drawing. I love it. I, I love that one a lot. And like, it, it I, I'm just... Loving it more and more. Uh, this is another special guest, but I don't know what this person has done. It's um, Akira M M M M Sorry if I butchered that. He drew like Nui and like a cross of Junkets and Senkets outfit. This I like. This is the only Nui art I like. Um, Nui sucks. Hate Nui. Don't need her in my life. So. Goodbye. But that's a good art. That, that's a good drawing of her. Uh, but yeah, so so this one has this more art of, like, the last leg of the show, which I kind of like. Like, this was, this is, like, the OVA ship that they did, episode 25. So, that's th these books. I do like these books. These were these are kind of fun to have, so if you want them, you can get them. They're, I don't think these were that expensive, either. I think they were, like, I would like to say there were 40. I would like to say that. I could be wrong, but I think that... I would say between 20 to 60, which is a big margin to guess, but I would I would, I would kind of guess that. I mean, it's been a while since I bought them, okay? These were just sitting around. Uh, I think that is it. I, I, be, I believe I've shown the... You know, I'll show just in case for good measure. For good measure, I'll show it. The art of Horizon Zero Dawn. Look at this. This I I was I I was very excited to get uh because because one of my favorite things about Horizon Zero Dawn one of my favorite fucking things is like everything else was whatever but what got me hyped for the game was I loved the hybrid of primal 
primal civilization with technology. Like the hybrid is uh, the hybridization of that is so good. It's it it does a good job balancing like oh these are like primitive like civilizations like they're all starting from scratch pretty much. So but they also have access to some technology but they don't understand it very well. So like it's it, you're never going to see like cars or anything like that. So I do like that this that this does a good job balancing between like what is believable, what is and and what's like sci-fi kind of shit. It doesn't it doesn't go over the top. It does a pretty good job like just hey, the technology is just there and they're just using this in a primal way. So I do so that's what I love about about this game. Uh you know, I and, and I'm going to I'm going to you know, this might be a, a a hot take, a controversial take, unpopular take. I don't know. I like the design of Aloy, even in the second game. Everyone memed on, on on how she looks, which is fine, you know, whatever. But I think it's it's a good design in the sense that it does that she that she looks ordinary, but not boring. You know, like it's not like I I would I would this is gonna be a meme by what I'm gonna say, but it kind of it kind of is is what. Last of Us 2 tried to do with Ellie, but Horizon Zero Dawn was more successful at it because I think Aloy is just a much more compelling character. So, you know, no one, I don't think a lot of people cared that much about how she looked. I, I do think that that how she looks in the second game does look kind of like weird in comparison to where she looked like in the first game, but I would also argue it doesn't look that bad. Like, I think I think to I think is this the the um the adrenaline of the of the uh trailer just like what the fuck she looks so weird but I think once you play Horizon Zero Dawn two I th I think I think her her design is just gonna like you know no one's gonna be really caring about how she looks because she's older so obviously you know her face is gonna change I mean your your face gets longer and all this shit uh but. I, I, as I said before, I do like that it's more of, like, a, a good job making an ordinary character compelling and interesting. It's not like, oh, okay, like, give her, give her a shirt and jeans. There you go. Like, Ellie, I thought was, like, I, I like her hair, I like, I like what they do with her hair, I like, I like the punk aesthetic, but it just wasn't enough it just also looked kind of generic because so many people pull from that kind of style so it's just whatever see this they did it right they did it wrong that's the bottom line uh i'm still ups i'm still mad i'm still mad they did the racking dirty in that fucking book oh here's a cool here's a cool enemy oh look at this thing okay put it put him in a little, little tiny panel really You're, that that that's that's what we're gonna see the fucking racking like Fuck you. So I'm still mad about that. I'm still sore. They need to fix that. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. They probably had all this data from for the Rat King. And they didn't fucking use it. And then they, and someone, someone probably was like, oh shit, I didn't turn this in. And I have all these cool pages. Someone, someone fu I, I think there's some drama there. Maybe. Guys, maybe what if the guy who, did the, who drew the Rat King was such a cool guy that he was the one that leaked the game because he was like yeah this game sucks post it online tell everyone about this and then fucking naughty dog was like oh this guy did it now we're not showing any of the rat king fuck that guy so that's bullshit dude if you drew the art if the, i know he's watching if you made the rat king fucking character post the art post it everywhere god damn it i want to see more of the fucking rat king damn it it's such bullshit it's such bullshit all right. You know what? I think we're going to end it with this. We're going to end this video, this long-ass video that no one likes. Everyone's hating it already. People are crying about it. The Street Fighter V art book, kind of. It's How to Make Capcom Fighting Characters, which is kind of a weird title since it's only focused on Street Fighter V. Literally only that. So I, I think it should have just... Well, I guess it says Street Fighter character design, but it should have just said Street Fighter V. Art book because it this doesn't go into any other Street Fighters. Only five. It doesn't show four. It doesn't show three. It doesn't show two. It doesn't show one. But 
I kind of like this book because it shows art I, I never saw before, but my major complaint of this book, and I kind of don't, and this is kind of a bummer to me, is that it it does show a lot of the in-game renders of of characters, which is fine, whatever. I mean, I get, I get why. I get why they're doing it, but I just kind of wish it focused more on the art side. You know, like, it, it's just, I don't know why Street Fighter can't get a genuine art book. You know, like, it... There's all these weird books you have to find and buy and all this stuff, and it's just, there's no, like, main genuine art book. Like, they have one for, like, Ultra Street Fighter 4, and that one is alright, but it's just, it's not that great. Like, the Street Fighter art books are really not that good, to be honest. Like, the Darkstalkers art books, those were good. Like, those showed a lot of things. Uh... But the Street Fighter, it's like, it really is like Capcom doesn't want to share their art for the for these for these games. I don't I don't get it. I don't get it. But whatever. Uh, I guess I'll have to wait till another art book because they've released two other seasons since the release of this. Because I don't think this has Poison in it. I think it stops at Arcade Edition. Yeah, I think it was all the way just up to the Arcade Edition updates. So, well, who was the last character? Was it G? I think it was G, yeah. So that's where it ends. Like, it doesn't have Poison, E Honda, uh, Akira, uh, Rose. It only has, like, uh, seasons one through three, which is whatever. I mean, I guess it depends on when this was made, but as I said, it's just, it's just a bummer that this is. This book was widely available because this was at Barnes and Nobles. It was everywhere, but there's no genuine art book for Street Fighter. For Street Fighter, it's so it's, it's kind of a bummer. Kind of a bummer, uh, to be to be honest with you. So that is it for this episode of Art Book Update. There will be more because there's always art books coming out. Uh, the one that's coming next is uh, Volume Two of of that Ava book I showed earlier. So that's exciting. I can't wait. But I really want, I really hope that we get a uh, groundwork book for the latest Ava Rebuild movie because, let me tell you, that, that movie was fucking perfect. So, can't wait, can't wait to see, to get the book of that. But I'm happy with what I got. The, so, these are the art books I have. I've shown the one for Metal Gear Solid 1 through 4 and in, in, in in another art book update. But that is it for this for this version uh, of it. Will there be more? Probably. When? I can't say. There's some art books I'm like on the fence of getting because it's like... I was considering getting The Mandalorian because... The one thing I like about The Mandalorian a lot is... The credits had a lot of concept art used. I think Season 2 didn't do that. which I Because I remember being very disappointed in that. I, I don't remember though. I'll have to look again. But I love that in season one, like, you watch an episode, then just, the credits are just, like, concept art, which, it's gonna be kind of funny. It kind of reminds me of, of Ruby, because when I used to watch Ruby, the credits always had, like, concept art of all the characters, and I, I thought that was really cool. Uh, but then, like, you know, but Ruby, I will, I will say, doesn't really have a pleasing art style, like... It, I just didn't really care for it, for, for it overall. But it was like, oh, this is neat. Whatever. And then Mandalorian comes out and does the same shit, and it's like, this is better. <laughs> like, it has better art. So I, 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 so I, I like Mandalorian for, for that, on that side of it. And I kind of wish more shows did that, where it's like, they show the art of the show in the credits. Like, that, that, that would have been, that would be rad. Uh, so, that is it. Uh, I actually don't know... I lied. I lied, guys. One more thing. Wait, did I say one more thing? I lied again. Two more things. But these are small books, guys. The other Kill I Kill frame data sheet, whatever. This one I liked a little bit more because it has one of my favorite scenes 
of Kill la Kill of all time. Like, I don't think there's any other scene that tops this in the show. When I watch this show, I was I, I get hyped all the time. This shit. If you watch Kill la Kill and you get to this episode, you'll know why. You you will watch it and be like, I get it, Theo. I get why why this is cool. I get it. You'll 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 sit there and be like, I got you. So there's that. And then Ruiner, baby. Ruiner artworks. This I, I I'm kinda I this is I think I went through it and I was like I kinda liked it and kinda hated it at the same time. Because I think it showed a lot Is it Oh no, I was wrong. I, I thought these were like in game models, but they're not, so never mind. I think these are actually drawn. So I like this book too, it's pretty cool. Uh, I like the back. Look that look at that. I kinda wanna play this game again. You know, maybe that'd be a game club game. Oh. Ah. Brain's brain's uh turning. My gears are turning. Alright. Alright, everyone. That is it for this episode of Art Book Update. Thank you for watching. This is a fun little video to to film. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.